So we'll move on to um, the Luciferical. So the Luciferical cosmos is very much um, based on the premise of self-improvement. Um, from the perspective of Lucifer, the, um, where you are in, in your consciousness or in the heavens or in um, depends on your own quality, your own light. And your light consists both of your intelligence, your understanding, your power, your control, and um, all things which you can increase. So, and the um, Luciferical cosmos is also the most active cosmos. Spirits who have Luciferical nature, they're always looking for ways to improve themselves, to learn, to become more. And um, in a positive sense, this is, um, in a way, um, leadership uh, um, by example. So you look at, gosh, this other person has a very has a nice new Porsche. <laughs> what do I have to do? Or what did they do to get this car? <laughs> can I do the same? Can I do it better than them so I can buy a bigger and newer Porsche than they? <laughs> um, this way of, uh, yeah, this method of consciousness is for many people very motivating because it corresponds very well with our instincts as human beings. Um, because uh, basically we are a little bit like, uh, like apes and monkeys. Um, who tend to live in, in like a harem structure. So you usually have like an, an alpha male or an alpha pair with an alpha male and female and they are the strongest, the brightest, the fastest of the group and um, they have the chance to procreate more and to, to guide the group and when another is more strong, more smart, well they are replaced. And this has been for yeah, a large part of evolution how we lived as human beings and so this is in our genes to try to become the better, the best within our little group, within our little circle. Um, so our own instincts are very much in tune with, uh, with the luciferical cosmos, with the luciferical nature. Um, so in a positive sense competition can be very good because it can inspire you, you can learn from others. Um, in a negative sense, you can also steal from others and take from others. So, if you want to be better than everybody else, you can make yourself greater, more powerful, more light, or you can dim the light of everybody else. So, this is kind of the dark side of the <laughs> Luciferical cosmos, and then it also seems like you are better <laughs> because everybody became worse. And because the light is always seen as very relative. So people within Luciferical Cosmos, they tend not to have their eye on the horizon, like, okay, I want to re-enter into, in, into, uh, into the heavens, but they're more usually concerned with local competition, like I want to be better than the person who's sitting next to me, or at least as good as, because they can't really tolerate being less. So they're very <coughs> active and also very... Um, inspired, motivated, career-oriented usually. Um, so, in general, in society, these people tend to do quite well and people tend to admire them or look up to them. Um, what is a sad truth is that often the more um, sick the person is, on a spiritual and uh, psychological level, the better they are in going up in the Luciferical Cosmos. Um, because people who have a very... Um, there, there are various things which help. So a person who's like a complete sociopath, they have no remorse, uh, the end always justifies the means, um, they don't have no empathy, with what they're doing to other people or how other people might feel about it. Uh, they have very little restriction to their power, to what they do. And this greater freedom allows them to move up more quickly, gather power, gather might, gather money more quickly than others. Um, and the other thing is that when people have a, a 
hunger or an anger which can never be satisfied. Um, so maybe they did not have enough in their youth and this feeling or fear of never having enough money, never feeling safe, never, never feeling respected enough keeps people moving higher and higher and higher because the hunger is never satisfied and it keeps them focused 24-7 every hour of every week they're focused on getting more and more and more and more and often these people are in themselves yeah, unhappy or angry or but in society and also in the spherical circles they yeah, make a very big career um, and in the same way that people can make career, can become like movie stars because they are attention hogs and they need to be affirmed. Um, in the same way they can also move up in the more esoterical circles by also um, absorbing or stealing powers from others. Um, and this can be done in a relatively friendly way and they can be borrowed, they can be copied. Um, Sometimes I use these techniques as well. So, for instance, I'm healing a person, and of course, they have better control over their energy bodies than I can as a healer. So, I can say, like, okay, can I have some of your healing talents? And I borrow them, and I use their healing talents to heal them, and then I give them back. So, but this is basically a Luciferical act because the power doesn't belong to me, it's not an intrinsic part of me, it is taken from somebody else. Uh, but also it can be used to help, but the intrinsic act of taking something which does not belong to you or adding to yourself, this impulse of adding more and more and more to yourself is very much a uh, Luciferical impulse. And um, sometimes it's a very tragic impulse because people have a hand which is this big and they keep on putting stones in it and they don't realize that their hand is not growing and with every stone they put in another stone falls out. <laughs> so some people are running and running and running and running and they're never moving from the same place because they don't look at their fundamental structure uh, to change. And so this is very much also the tragedy of many people who have like spiritual wounds or psychological wounds that they are working very hard all their lives but they're never solving their problem and never getting really any better but they're working very hard and other people yeah they have more the tendency to be like a block of clay so everything they add to it sticks to it and it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger but if you're not a careful collector and you just collect everything then you end up with a room full of junk which is basically worthless <laughs> then rather than a beautiful and complete collection which is very beautiful and very powerful so having a certain limitation in your growth or direction in your growth is very important for people of a luciferical nature because people of a luciferical nature have a tendency to be interested in everything and to want everything um, but because of that their attention is spread so thin and often they absorb energies and powers which actually yeah, don't work well together so they can also make their energy body sick by taking initiations which don't match with each other or energies which are coming from different cosmoses or using different principles to what is used yeah, it's really attuned to their own energy bodies. So often they're a little bit hasty in their, in their development and this is one of the risks. So they're very active, but not always very wise. But if a person is of luciferical nature and has enough knowledge and skill and self-control, they can reach a lot of power very quickly. And uh, most of the, of the teachers, uh, spiritual teachers, are actually luciferical in nature and especially a lot of the spiritual spirituality coming from the US is also luciferical in nature because it's very much focused on um, you can control your own wealth, your own success, your own um, uh, things by positive thinking, by exercises, by power and increase your knowledge, increase your control so it's a little bit like mixed in with Aramanic impulses, but also very strong Luciferical impulses, because our 
automatic impulses are often more um, also about using your power for others. And in um, the, the spherical cosmos it is usually using power for yourself. Using power for yourself is not necessarily a bad thing though. Because it is the essence of, of growth, it's the essence of health, it's the essence of spiritual development. That you have to invest power in yourself, you have to maintain a healthy energy system, you have to maintain a healthy physical body, you have to maintain your social contacts. Um, and all these investments in the self, uh, they're very necessary also just to maintain your functioning as an organism. Um, and you, there is a difference, of course, between like what is like a maintenance level of, of attention and of energy you spend on yourself, what is investment that you're actually increasing things and which is, in a way, stressing yourself by, in a way, pushing yourself too far in trying to grow too quickly or too explosively. Um, so... What we see is also with the, with the popularity of capitalism growing in the world um, and capitalism is basically also very much the Luciferical impulse. Um, it's also, the Luciferical impulse is also very connected to, uh, uh, to anarchism, uh, to yeah, in a way democracy, personal freedom. Um, because this is the ideal for the, the Luciferical person to have, in a way, um, yeah, all total yeah, power, total knowledge. Um, so not to be trapped in a system like the, uh, like the Arimanic person is, but rather to have complete freedom. Um, but as I said before, the problem is that complete freedom is also freedom from morality. And freedom from morality can be fine, um, because morality is indeed just another set of rules and restrictions, and it is a kind of violence against yourself, limiting yourself. But if there is still too much impurity in your being, there is too much low energy, sins, attachments, um, then freeing yourself from your mor morality cage can lend you... Uh, can. You can end up being imprisoned by your own addictions, by your own desires, by your own attachments, which can be even worse than your morality cage. <laughs> so it's a kind of a process in steps. So you first have to work on purifying your lower vibrations before you can get rid of your yeah, restrictions on higher levels like morality. And if you do this in the wrong order, then it's very easy to slide down into the dark side of this uh, Luciferical cosmos. Um, let me just also explain a little bit the difference between how I define light side and dark side. Um, it is not so much about like harming others, because both sides do that. It's also not about truth, because both sides lie. Um, it is usually very much more about the, the focus being either on, uh, on purity, on a kind of uh, perfection, um, which is yeah, motivating the light side. So they want, in a way, to uh, ultimately rejoin with the heavens. And they uh, view the heavens as a place of greater order, of greater purity, of greater perfection. So they have to purify themselves, to perfect themselves, to be, yeah, live according to the heavens. And this way they will eventually be reabsorbed, or so they hope. Um, the dark side have a different perspective. Um, they see um, that to reach anything, uh, you need power, you need knowledge, you need control. And um, that if you have enough power, you have enough knowledge, you have enough control, time is endless, then everything is possible. And it doesn't matter if you want to reach the heavens or want to reach any other goal. When you have the tools, everything can be done. And this is what is the definition of the dark side of the cosmos. 
and it is possible to make progress on both levels. So a person can be in a very high position, both in light side and dark side of cosmos, uh, they can be very pure, but also have a lot of power and control. But um, it is a tendency for people to uh, use power rather than use personal transformation. So it is often a choice. Like if there is, for instance, I want to be Malina's friend, and Malina is like, well, I'm not sure if I like you. Then I can use two techniques. I can say like, well, okay, how can I manipulate Malina? Maybe I can smile at her, or be very friendly, or make her nice food, and she will like me. And by my skill in cooking, and smiling, and talking, and being charming, I can be her friend. <laughs> so this is dark cosmos method. <laughs> or I can say like, okay, well, Melina has, uh, has her life, and she has her structure, um, and yeah, she can't find what is my place in this structure in her life, and how can I add to her life instead of just intruding her life? Like what, yeah, is it in me that she would value, what she would need, what would be my qualities which I need to um, to show and what is what in me is disrupting her life in if I'm like really an attention hog I call her every day oh Marlena listen what happened to me <laughs> <laughs> oh okay maybe I need to be less selfish and this is some of my faults which she is not accepting and I should get rid of these personal impurities and then I can be Marlena's friend <laughs> so and this fundamental difference of method in solving problems or how you look at the problem it's basically what determines whether you tend to go more into the light side or more into the dark side of any cosmos. And well, as we all have learned from watching Star Wars, the dark side is not so much more powerful, but it is easier and more seductive. <laughs> and <that's>, uh... <laughs> That was explained very well by uh, a student from uh, from a mystery school, and uh, he compared it to uh, uh, saving or getting a credit card. <laughs> so if you if you want something and you're working for the light light side, you have to work very hard and watch your money, and eventually you will have enough money and you can get the thing you want. <laughs> and if you work for the dark side, you have a credit card. You get what you want and you worry about the consequences later. <laughs> yeah, that's perfectly understandable. <laughs> <laughs> and well, credit cards are very easy and very seductive and lots of people get into trouble <laughs> that way. <laughs> and I think it's very good. Yeah. Manifestation. <laughs> so, are there many questions about Lucifer and Cosmos? So, go ahead this way. Mm, not right now, maybe later. Okay. It's for, for me not to, so I don't feel I have to go there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no interest. See. <laughs> not <laughs> interest. <laughs> Coming back. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's fresh air. Oh, you mean so I should leave it open? Yeah, I can, but then I need a blanket. Also, because wenn es jetzt nicht so viel ausmacht. Ja, yeah. yeah, yeah. ich kann es auch mal so auf. Äh, ja. Oder so mal Plätze Weht tauschen. es mir so in die Nacken rein. Ich ist nicht. Mhm. Nee. Ich habe ja noch so eine Wolle. Das ist schon. Nee, das ist gut. <lacht> du wolltest da hin. Nein, das, das war der letzte Platz, der frei war. Ich hatte ihn nicht drauf. Nein, ich meinte in diesem Kosmos. Ach so. <lacht> äh, ja. Okay. So. Okay. I'll take a relaxed position. In the same way as in our Romantic Cosmos, we were looking downward, focusing down, we're now focusing inward. It's basically an egocentric cosmos. And feel attention focusing on yourself for some people the heart is most easy other people the belly let the vibration help you yourself from the outside world and focus on your inner light and your inner strength and your inner guidance the God within the goddess within slumbers in you. And let this power grow. We'll now invite guides for us from this cosmos. higher worlds. Feel how your light becomes like a magnet. Just like Lucifer, it starts attracting all the other light and knowledge which exists. You're the heart of the universe. The whole universe shines upon you. All the stars shine upon you. Feel how even the 
guides which have come to you from this cosmos fall into your inner sun and become one with your light. Let your whole consciousness, the whole body is engulfed by your light. increases, your vibration increases. You start floating up into places of even more light, more bliss, greater perfection, greater power. And you become like a comet shooting up into the stars, into the skies. star outshines anything in the universe, that you are the source of light for all other beings, and that all your power and wisdom flows through you. into itself. slow down and focus see what light is you and what light is just something you collected knowledge which you did not create helping you to go where you need to go, but is pulling you in other directions. It would be really good, really pure, in this, this very cosmos, there would be only us. Identity. 
Kijk. Let those things go. light that's fear from you, all power and knowledge, which does not belong to you, it should not be part of you. And together with all this power, let go all the hunger, the temptation, Attracted this wrong knowledge to your being. Just to make progress in a spherical world. First, you need to. Self-knowledge, self-control, otherwise you will surely get lost. Say farewell to all the feelings which are distracting you. of your body. And focus on this part of your being, the part of being which is sitting in this room right here, right now. Without losing all the other parts of yourself. Just come here with your attention. Next Christmas will be easier. Satan? <laughs> Satan? Yes. Mm -hmm. Super. <laughs> was any good at this cosmos. No, I, no. I didn't feel, I was like, yeah, pff, uh, what, I, am I in it? No, I don't know. I didn't feel like being in it at all. Or like, yeah, what am I doing here? I just <laughs> couldn't. I didn't feel any attachment. Like, yeah, it's a bit strange. <laughs> Terrible, the most terrible thing. <laughs> <laughs> the most terrible feeling. Uh, feeling like claustrophobic. Like, oh my gosh. No, 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 too much, too much, too much. <laughs> Just too much. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. If that explains everything, <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
Yeah, I feel really uh, tired now. That was taking a bit of me, and um, I feel that cla claustrophobic feeling too. And, and, and I had a lot of pressure on my chest, and I couldn't breathe properly. And um, with focus, I, I couldn't go anywhere but here. So I couldn't expand myself, and, and uh, I couldn't follow the directions you gave and um, all of the time I was thinking no I don't want to this is all my brothers and sisters and stuff and whatnot I, I don't want to expose myself somewhere mm -hmm. somewhere there so I don't I, I was good at keeping it at myself so keeping it here and um, yeah not also there was also no co nothing really coming to my mind when, when letting something go I, I just had this thought, thought, uh, thought okay drop what you don't need and the only thing that really came to me was anger so and, mm -hmm. and that was a relief that that was that was good and, and I could go with that but apart from that uh, it's basically indeed that uh, the spirit cosmos is very much the cosmos of attraction Mm. of uh, in a way of, of karma also like what we carry inside us as energies we also pull towards us as power or solution or lessons or mm. other things like that so it's a very good cosmos to, to visit if you want to work on yourself also to purify yourself mm. yeah it's, yeah, that helps it's not one of my favorites <laughs> but no. it's, it's, it's an effective cosmos <coughs> So a lot of the healing techniques which come come out of this cosmos are also quite good and quite mm. effective. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was uh, very sad. <laughs> <laughs> it was a. It started with this big sadness. Mm. This, you could see or feel this great barrier. This is big hole, mm. and all the light that was around me, it was bright, but it wasn't warm. Yes. Yeah. So it was very cold and, mm -hmm. and it was very... Uh, was that eng? Uh, tight. It was very tight mm -hmm. at the heart. Yes. And uh, I could see all the temptations but, and all the attractive things, but it seemed worthless for me. It's also very much the essence of the, the supergood cosmos that uh, there is, is a fundamental loneliness. So it is mm. about you, but when you are the best and the brightest thing possible, then the rest of the, the, the universe also yeah, doesn't seem that interesting anymore because there's nothing outside of you, nothing better, nothing higher. So it's, it's very much limited the capital of almost. And only by adding things which don't really belong to you, you get some stimulus. Mm. So it's very closely connected also to addictions. And people's, like their own experiences, their own emotions, are not strong enough for them. So they need, like, yeah, some amphetamines or whatever to make them feel more love or more energy, more power, more confidence than they're naturally capable of. Um, so these are very much, uh, yeah afflictions which also have to do with attunement to this cosmos mm -hmm. and currently about 60-70% of incarnated humanity is actually belongs to this cosmos almost oh, many count? 60 or 70% yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it depends a little bit on the continent but definitely in the western world it is higher than in, in Asia mm. yeah. and for me the pregnant this feeling of uh, division Yes. Mm, yeah. This yes. was yeah. It yeah. was the no main connection. Thing, so. yeah. yeah, being separated. Yeah. Being separated. yourself and, and I, for me it was this. Uh, um, I could see everyone around me, mm -hmm. but um, I was in this kind of like spot here. Yeah, and it felt like having no meaning. You know, like yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, <coughs> what am I doing here? I, mm -hmm. There's nothing to do here. Or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, and I don't want to be lonely. I want to connect to the others, and I want to be among them, and 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 yeah, one with them, and not not being so isolated. Mm. Well, I'm glad you could all experience it so well. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it, it also helps to have a little bit more understanding of how many people spend well, their whole lifetimes mm -hmm. uh, feeling and looking and never being satisfied, always feeling this emptiness, this loneliness. And it's like an itch you cannot scratch, so they keep on going and going and running and looking and searching. And <laughs> like like, like a, a rat in a ball. Which, yes. is, which is running and can't yeah, can't get, get out, out of the ball. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yes, certainly. So, yeah. Yeah. And he thinks he's getting somewhere because it's all, all the time different and looking different. And, but yeah. yeah, he's still trapped in his own little universe. Yeah. So it's very much the case of people or spirits who belong to this very cosmos. But also, this very cosmos is what also helped us to create our individuality. Mm -hmm. And um, also a lot of co yeah higher consciousness because indeed as you said like people who are very strong in aromatic impulse they have very low vibrations generally so they're often very materialistic mm -hmm. and um, in the spherical um, cosmos people have illusions. So they don't have the actual thing, but they have this illusion like I can be happy or I can be content or I can be spiritual. But in a way, because of their nature, they never really get into the contact with the God or the angel or whatever, because mm -hmm. they're trapped in their own universe. They, everything has to come to them and by it coming to them, it's no longer what it originally was because it is limited by them, by their own ability to comprehend. So does, <clears throat> does that mean uh, for making other experiences for a luciferic spirit or, um, that someone uh, that something has to come to get it out of there because when you said when you just said um, if the luciferic spirit attracts something to it it's limited on yeah. in the first place so yeah. how how do, do they evolve then? So? Um, the luciferical experience is letting them know that something exists on, on, a, on a higher level. So if I have this, for instance, illusion of, uh, of an angel or of Jesus or whatever, mm -hmm. um, that can give me some idea that maybe outside of my own uh, little bubble world, okay. there is a real Jesus, Jesus or angel. <laughs> okay, so this is so the... It, this it, 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 it can help with, with things, but... Um, while you are still within the Lucifer cosmos, you cannot get to the proofing until you change your paradigm. Mm -hmm. But you can get closer to it because you can also, by experiencing this, this, yeah, this saint, you can say like, okay, so I need to be more like this or more like that, and then you, you, you come closer and closer to it. And if you get really high in the Lucifer cosmos, then yeah, it's almost pure, it's almost the same because you filter out less and less because your consciousness increases and increases. Mm -hmm. But ultimately it's never going to be the real thing, it's always going to be a copy of <laughs> or a model of. Because ultimately your universe is limited by yourself. So there, there ultimately there's never be a chance to um kind of like step out of your family line then. Um, so, uh, in, in, with luciferical methods, uh, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is, it is, you, you become more conscious of it, you, you get more control over it, um, but ultimately it is, it is part of you and of your being, so it, it will never be gone. It will just be a controlled part of you instead of an unconscious part of you. Mm -hmm. So, on a broader level, when you just said that uh, 60 or 70 percent of, of the spirits incarnated now are in, from this luciferical um, cosmos, that means they only get that far and no, no further? Or? Yes, until they yeah, move to another cosmos, yes. Okay. But also the luciferical cosmos can go quite high. Okay. 
because if you look at like many prophets or saints or great spiritual monsters, they're actually lucifrical in nature, and the majority of them is actually lucifrical in nature. Okay, so, so it doesn't mean that if you're lucifrical in nature, you cannot achieve anything, mm -hmm. but that the ultimate achievement is always out of reach, <laughs> because you can never become one with with something which you cannot understand, which is great, truly greater than you. And you can try to surpass it <laughs> by getting more power or more light than it, but you can never become one with it. <laughs> You're always trapped within yourself. But this also makes the Luciferical cosmos very easy, because everything comes to you. Uh, you attract everything. You're you also go into the illusion of self-importance that you can control your life, you can control your cosmos, you can control your spiritual development and part of it is taking responsibility for yourself but other part of it is indeed like very strongly the, the ego and the illusions of, of power, importance and a twisted view of reality. The rat in the ball is a very good example. So mm. there's a lot of accumulation. It's very easy to accumulate things, especially these days. You can just uh, go to a workshop, read a book, take some classes, and you can add all kinds of knowledge and powers and techniques and skills to yourself. <laughs> and yeah, and you have the idea that you're being spiritual, you're getting somewhere, you're improving yourself. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's mainly lucifer in nature, a lot of the knowledge which are, is so easy to achieve. And what on the other hand um, would, would it be um, to really make an um, um, experience with a creator? Well, we're getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> Next yeah. cosmos. Next yeah. cosmos. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but I feel that I, uh, I still am um, stuck with this, um, with the question of um, how to, even even if you, mm -hmm. because I, I think it's not a great achievement if you don't really get there, if you can only go this far, even if, if you're a saint or what, mm -hmm. what not. Yeah. So. But if you don't like, get the real deal, so what's what's the worst of it? And and um, yeah. how could someone who really wants it badly uh, to 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 skip or or switch to to another cosmos so yeah. to really make uh, an experience? Discussions about that are uh, are varied. Um, so every every path of development has advantages and every path of development claims of course that their way is the best way to um, yeah to to reintegrate or to go back into the heaven so one of them are saying like no you should focus on yourself build yourself up to a very high level the other said no you should be like god live like god and take responsibility for others uh, others yeah but who actually is most successful is hard to tell Mm -hmm. um, because they're all in a way gravitating or evolving towards the same point, towards a higher consciousness, a greater purity, greater power. Um, so ultimately the differences between the cosmoses tend to become less uh, the higher you get. Okay. Yeah. And, but on the lower levels the differences are quite pronounced. <laughs> mm -hmm. But because of also if you have, like, if you are in the spherical cosmos and you have really a great understanding of like uh, spiritual evolution of life of the purpose of life of the patterns of life of all the different powers involved um, and then just out of that understanding um, you also have a model and structure of like the entire cosmos as you would have in the arimanic cosmos and because of all your experiences and dealings with all the other powers where you were learning from or stealing from or whatever, you also have more contact with all these other things, so it all kind of migrates to the same point, but following a different paradigm. So it's a different way of, of researching and working on, on the spiritual world. So it wouldn't, in the end, wouldn't make uh, no difference, uh, to, so to speak, if, if 
someone is very high in luciferical cosmos and on the other uh, another one uh, other spirit is very low in the satanic cosmos would they kind of like be at the same level or mm -hmm. because uh, right mm -hmm. now as you explained mm -hmm. it i see that there is a barrier between yes, us definitely a and and, and yes. It really is um, yeah, determined in, uh, which side you are on yes. this barrier. Yeah. Yes, so. it is. And that's really, on, like in a way, the nature of the being becomes more and more similar in understanding, in power, in capability. But the fundamental difference um, is, is, is basically, uh, you can lead it back to, in a way, the, the, um, the, um, the high sins in, in Buddhist, uh, sorry, Hindu philosophy, mm -hmm. um, because of course you have the, the Christian system of sins, where you say like if you have certain qualities, and you're impure, and you're, you cannot enter into the heaven. Um, and also within Hindu philosophy, you have the, the high sins, uh, which also uh, make you not one with God. And um, um, the way they uh, they look at it is that uh, the lowest of the high sins, so the sin which in a way lands you in the Arimanic cosmos, is the sin of obedience. So that if you are follow all the rules, you do what you're told, um, you you follow the law, you obey the, the system, uh, then you end up in Arimanic cosmos because you are identifying with the system, you're identifying with your place in the system, so this is your location. If you're completely obedient, you're part of Arimani Cosmos. Very simple. Mm -hmm. um, second sin uh, is the sin of believing in, uh, in karma, in work, in action and reaction. Mm -hmm. So that everything you do has a result and that by doing certain things you can have certain results. And this is true, just like the system is true, so they are all truths, but also different impurities. And um, so the sin of karma is that, in a way, people who are in a way working to, to change themselves, to alter themselves, to improve themselves, they're in a way not one with God, because ultimately, just like the person who is looking at the universe as a system, he does not see God, he sees a system. And the person who is in a way like taking total control over their own spiritual evolution, their own development, they cannot see and accept the guidance and uh, the gains of, of God and the divine world because they are doing it already. They're not allowing the divine in because they're not saying like, God save me, they're saying I will save myself. <laughs> mm. And the highest sin, which is the sin which leads you into the Satanic cosmos is the sin of goodness, mm. and it is that you feel, yeah, <laughs> love for others. You feel one with others. You feel attached to others. You want to help them, and because of that, your attention is focused on other people, on animals, on nature, on stones, on whatever you want to take care of. And you're not listening to God. You're not focusing on God. God is not the most important thing in your life. It is. Your dog, your cat, your lover, you <laughs> whatever. <laughs> mm. um, in Hindu philosophy, they see it as a, as a ladder. So the lowest sin determines in, in what cosmos you will be. And if you ultimately want to become one with God and play with the God in the divine games, you have to get rid of all three tendencies, of all three sins. Um, of course, in the legend we just heard, it is very much more of a fundamental difference in what is progress or how to progress. So, do you progress by humility, goodness, which is the satanic way? Do you progress by working on yourself, which is the luciferical way? Or do you progress by just accepting your position and doing the best you can, which is our romantic way? <laughs> Spherical cosmos, as I said, is the most active of the cosmoses because it's the original rebel, you could say. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a trademark. Yes. <laughs> original original yeah. re rebel. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you can only change the cosmos with another incarnation. 
Um, usually not even with another incarnation. It's, it's usually like people are part of that cosmos for God knows how long. They are born into it, they die into it. And people changing cosmos doesn't happen very often. But we, we can travel around there. Yes, we, so we can, but our nature, our spirit, is believes in one thing, depending upon your original sin, what separates you from God. Is it because you want to be more good, or because you want to control your own faith, or because you are just listening to higher powers and you're like, okay, well, some greater God says, okay, I will be better off if I do this, okay, let's do this. Then are you basically being ignorant? <laughs> or uh, often uh, an aspect of, of the fall into the... Um, Arimani cosmos is also naivete. So if you believe that the government will take care of you or your banks will help you or whatever. <laughs> and in, in, in the same way believing yeah. in gurus, like okay, if I follow my guru, he will make me enlightened. And yeah. <laughs> and and what is, uh, what, uh, mm -hmm. uh, believing in angels, in archangels, and follow their uh, voices, isn't it? It is very hard to distinguish the lowest from the highest. Mm. So would this be this uh, arithmetic? Uh, arithmetic? Arithmetic? The divine arithmetic cosmos, the unfolding arithmetic cosmos. Arithmetic path? Um, it can be, yes. If you are, in a way, um, if you say, like, I have to listen to this archangel because he has authority over me, and Lucifer is the, is the, is the king of the angels and the angels are the king over me, and this is the system I have to obey, then you're in Arimanic cosmos. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also in every cosmos there are angels. Mm -hmm. But, well, there are Arimanic angels, or the spherical angels, or satanical angels. <laughs> and the same with gods and goddesses, they also exist in all cosmoses. Mm -hmm. So, well, it's not so easy. <laughs> but, you all, you've now felt a little bit how these powers work, or how they inspire you, how they guide you. And all the spirits, and also the angels and the goddesses from the different cosmoses, they inspire and lead you in different ways. So I think we will do one more trip, and then we will have another break. Yes, break.